back to predictions. All right, in my last video, I got like fucking 20 hits or some shit like that. Man, I mean, what the fuck am I supposed to do? Like, change the fucking background? You guys really want me to change the fucking background or some shit? Or like, uh, put some glasses on or, or take some fucking notes? Uh, it's not going to happen, guys. Look, the only reason I'm putting these fucking videos out is for uh, fucking retards like you. That don't know MMA from a fucking hole in the ground and trying to just, you know, maybe push it a little bit. Like, so you'll, you, you'll take a view, come back, watch my video, and see if I'm right or wrong. Because, it, like, 75% of the time, I'm fucking right. So I want to make my previews, okay? So, uh, yeah, my last video, maybe it wasn't the best video, but fucking 20 views is fucking crazy. I mean, I've never had that low of fucking, that low of a fucking, um, uh, an audience. You guys are assholes, seriously. Not the ones watching. The ones that aren't watching. So, I'm not really calling you an asshole. I'm calling people that aren't watching assholes. So, you guys are cool. You guys are cool with me. Fucking cheers. Seriously, you guys are awesome. I fucking love you. UFC 145. Jones is going to submit Rashad Evans. Mark it now. Mark it on your fucking calendar. Put it in your phone. Um, uh, take a note. Make a fucking tattoo. I don't give a shit. He's getting submitted. Um, Evans has every which way to win this fight, but he will not. Jones will remain dominant, and he's going to give Rashad his first submission loss um, of his career. If he doesn't submit him, he will TKO him. There's no way this fight's going to a decision. That's, I mean, it, well, obviously there's an empty seat. Um, she's no longer, uh, 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 she, you'll no longer see her. She, um, she... She she likes weird stuff. So um, she uh, she's not going to be here anymore. So um, I will have another person with me uh, soon enough that knows way more about MMA than she does. She's just not going to read my notes anymore. It'll be you know someone actually knows. But um, uh, trust me, Jones is going to submit Evans. He he's he's grown as as a fighter. He's grown physically. He's grown uh, mentally. He's grown immensely in every single way, shape, and form that you need to be as a fighter to beat Rashad Evans. Now, Rashad Evans did go to the Black Zillas in Florida. He did change camps. But was it good or bad? He beat up Tito Ortiz, but who the fuck hasn't? You know, everyone fucking beat Tito Ortiz, you know, except for Ryan Bader. A cop with an uppercut and then got fucking guillotine. And Tito was fighting for his goddamn life. You know, he was fighting for his life when he took uh, took on Rashad on fucking short notice like a tough guy and got his ass kicked, you know. Um, and then he took on Lil Nog, and obviously liver shots are just not the place that he likes to get hit. Hit him in the fucking liver, he drops like a fucking rock. I thought his jaw was fucking broken. There was something wrong with his face or some shit, but it actually was a fucking body shot that dropped the guy. He's way past his prime, and he needs to just realize that he's past his prime and stop. You know, Dana White had to force uh, Chuck Liddell into retirement. I don't know why he's not doing the same thing with Ortiz. But he's not, so um, you know we'll just we'll 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 just we'll we'll play this one by ear. Um, any fight that Ortiz is in next, I think it's uh, Griffin. He's gonna get his ass kicked. Okay, <clears throat> we got Rory McDonald. He's definitely for sure. Like there's no doubt in my mind. I, I don't know too much about this guy, uh, Che Mills. I don't know too much, but I know that he's awesome. That's the only thing I know that he's fucking awesome. I did see a highlight reel. And uh, the guy's fucking incredible. He has a, a great record, 14-4. So, um, yeah, I mean, it, it looks like a really good fight. Uh, I, I'm picking Rory McDonald um, by um, by TKO submission, second, third round. Okay, uh, next fight we have on the card is um, uh, Brendan Schnaub on my lob against Big Ben Rothwell. I love Ben Rothwell. Uh, he was a man back in the IFL days. He was uh, he was incredible to watch, and, and, and his endurance of being a fat guy is fucking incredible. You know, uh, he's not only a fat guy; he's seriously heavyweight. Like, there's no way he's not a fade or type of guy. He's not a guy that could drop to to a five or potentially one eighty five. He he's a fat fucking dude, and and uh, just like a big country who has the best chin in MMA, by the way, and uh, and um in you know. And like you know, flaunts it. He's a flabby guy, you know. He has some you know muscle to him. Um, he did get his ass handed to him. Um, it was prematurely stopped, but his ass was getting handed to him by former champion um, Kane Velasquez. But I'm gonna go ahead and pick uh, Brendan Schlabmanab for that. Yeah, there's no doubt. And I'm going to definitely pick Homnick against um, Eddie Yeager. There's no doubt in my mind. He has a good record, too. 15-5-1. It's not bad. But, you know, Homnick, the Homnick machine, 2010. 
I just, you know, he's got a reach advantage, and uh, he's just, he's much better on the feet, he's much better on the ground, I think that Hom is going to take that fight, we got Mark Bocek, and uh, he's hoping to actually retire in his fight, in, in these fights that are supposed to happen, there's supposed to be three fights in, um, in uh, Canada in uh, 2012, and he wants to retire in Calgary, because it's his, uh, his hometown, so uh, we'll see what happens, but, um, it looks as if uh, Hansel Matt Wyman has a slight disadvantage in the reach, but um, same weight, uh, same experience. So you know, 14, 6, 10, and 4. So it looks like um, for this one, uh, it, it's a tough one to call. But I'm gonna flip a coin and call Matt Hansel Wyman for the win by decision. Now we go to Miguel Angel Torres versus Michael McDonald. Easy all day, 39 and 4, 40, or 14 and 1, excuse me, uh, 5959, 9, 135, 135, both identical reach, weight, height, and Miguel's records off the fucking hook. We all know again uh, about Miguel's fucking reign in the WEC and, and before them, uh, uh, before that. So, um, uh, Miguel Angel Torres has not been the same fighter since he got KO'd by Brian Bowles. However, he is on a comeback trail and uh, he is more disciplined, so I see this going to decision, but I see it going Torres' way. Um, anyone that has any disagreement, by the way, about anything, uh, by anything that I'm saying, please just put a comment below. Travis Brown, Chad Griggs. Chad Griggs is a former uh, Strike Force fighter. Um, he he was doing really well in Strike Force. Um, I love watching him fight. I actually do watch other things in UFC. By the way, the sport's not called UFC. It's called Mixed Martial Arts. And there are several organizations that you should watch other than the UFC. Okay, Travis Brown, 12-0, uh, and 0, undefeated uh, against Chad Griggs, who's 11-1, which is, which is close. I'm going to go with Chad the Grave Digger Griggs just for some reason. Don't know why, don't know where and how, don't care. Just going to go with Chad Griggs. We have Matt, the uh, Immortal Brown, and, and Stephen Thompson. I don't know who Stephen Thompson is. He's, he, he's Stephen Wonderboy Thompson. He's 6 and 0. He's undefeated. He's, uh, he's 6 foot tall. Great welterweight. Don't know anything about him and uh, don't care to. Uh, Matt Brown has an unfortunate record of 15 and 11. So we'll see what happens there. You know, I've, I've seen uh, Matt Brown on the brink of defeat and come back in spectacular fashion, and I think he's one of the most underestimated fighters uh, in that division. And uh, when his back's against the wall is when he fights best, so I'm going to go ahead and pick Brown by submission. Um, next fight, we long, uh, again, on the undercard, we have uh, uh, John uh, McDessie versus Anjuani. Um, uh, I got Anjuani, period. That's it. Anjuani. Knockout. Anyway, uh, moving on, Mac Danzig versus Efren Escudero, the battle of the tough contenders. Okay, 5-8-5-9, Mac Danzig's 21-9-1, one, with one in the contest, fought in Pride, fought in UFC, blah, blah, blah. Efren Escudero got a big fucking head, you know, he got all these fucking cool sponsors, just got a big head, and kind of got weird on people, and Dan White like, cut him for a while, and uh, he, got, well, he got armbarred by uh, uh, Evan Dunham, and, and um, it, it, it kind of hurt him a little bit, so um, other than that, uh, he's had a spectacular career. So it's hard to call this one, but I'm going to go ahead and call Mac Danzig because um, uh, after that knockout of uh, Joe Stevenson, I think he's uh, I think he's on a, um, a good path. So let's just, you know, let's fucking end it there because no one cares really about these other two guys. I don't even know their fucking names, man. So let's just fucking end it there. So I'm glad you all watched it. And I, I, I sincerely want to thank you all for your support and uh, watching my videos and commenting, giving me likes and, and uh, things to talk about whenever uh, I log in and see your comments. And, and, and if you notice, I do talk back. Uh, I do answer your questions and, and reply to your comments, even if they're fucking rude and weird and, and everything in between. So um, I, I do appreciate it. I thank you all very, very much from uh, from the depths of my heart. I, I thank you very much for your subscriptions. They mean a lot to me, and, and, and your comments do as well. Thank you all, and uh, we, you know we'll see you after UFC 145. And uh, there will be a post show, a huge fucking celebration, I guarantee. I'll have naked broads, three of them. See, there's, if you look, there's four seats. I have three naked rods in the background, guaranteed next time. Tune in.